everyone, my name is Gabby Sparts and I'm a Magic the Gathering player and streamer. I've been streaming Magic Online on Twitch for a little over a year, and I've had such a blast doing so, it's, it's really been great. If you're not familiar with Twitch, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it now. Twitch is a website that allows people to broadcast themselves playing games in real time. And it has a very large active Magic community on there. So people will be playing games live and you as a viewer at home can interact with them as they play. So it's really neat. You get to make, you know, you get to weigh in when the draft is going on and say things like, oh, I think this pick is better for our deck. Or um, in the middle of a match, you can say, hey, we could have taken this line. Maybe that would have worked out better for us. And, and we learned something from it. Um, even in sideboarding, we can, you know, this broadcaster or the streamer and the audience can discuss like, hey, I think we should board like this or we should take this out in this matchup. So it's an awesome way to get better at magic. It's an awesome way to learn more too, because there's a really wide gamut of players who stream magic. You have players who are very new and they're trying to get better. And then you have players who are professional players and you have lots to learn from. So great community. Uh, so much that you can do on there. I highly encourage you to check it out if you never have. It's an awesome resource you have available to you. Um, and this will be a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a Twitch stream. Um, if you've never set up anything like that before, it's going to be specifically for open broadcaster software, uh, which is the program that I use for streaming Magic Online. So something to keep in mind is that there are... Um, different types of streaming software that you can use it is free all, all most services are free so you have a wealth of options you have obs you have game show you have xsplit you have elgato um i use open broadcaster software broadcaster software and the website is obsproject.com it's free to use and here you have a couple of options. You can do, um, this is the option that I recommend right here. Uh, you need to have Windows 7, 8, or 10 in order for this to work for you. And once you click it, it'll download it to your computer. Obviously, I already have it on my computer. I'm pointing to it right here. Um, but when you download it and you boot it up, you it will look sort of like this. You won't be on the camera though. Um, but over down here, do you see the section that says scenes? Uh, this section is where we add a new, basically a home base. So we're going to go ahead and set add scene. We're going to call this daily MTG, MTGO setup. There we go. So this is what it's going to look like when you first open OBS. Like I said, I have scenes here already because I already have different setups for streaming Magic Online. This is all going to be empty for you and that's completely normal. So over here, when we go to sources, uh, we want to add Magic Online. That's the first thing we want on there. We definitely need the game on there. So we're going to go right click, add, and we're going to add a monitor capture. We can call this MTGO. It's going to open a couple of options. It's going to ask us for which monitor we want to stream from. And then all these options down here, the default is, is fine for these. Um, so I'm going to select monitor one. Monitor one is currently the monitor that I'm on. Now, when I hit this, I, just a warning, we're gonna go into infinity. It's gonna look a little jarring. I just wanna show you that this is normal. So this is basically what it looks like. Um, if you're only using one monitor, this is completely normal and it's gonna look like this for you as well. Uh, let's go back up to properties real quick. For the purposes of this tutorial, I have set up a second monitor so that we don't have to see that infinity and beyond scene. Um, I also really strongly recommend if, if you're going to get into streaming and be doing it more often, I really encourage you to um, get a second monitor. You don't need anything fancy. It doesn't need to be expensive, but it makes it so much easier to manage your stream uh, because you can put uh, the program on one side and then have your window and other things in the other. So you can put like your music on the other side. Uh, you can put you know, Facebook, if you're chatting with anybody, if you're Skyping anybody into your stream, uh, you can have them all on the other monitor that is away from what, what your audience can see. Uh, in any event, we are now viewing my desktop. Um, so now we want to get Magic Online there. Uh, as you see, as you can see, I have Magic Online right here. So it's going to open the program. All right. So the first thing that you're going to notice and one of the questions that I get asked the most is 
I can't get Magic Online to show up. Um, that's because a lot of people try to add uh, game capture and try to capture Magic Online itself. So the way Magic Online works is every time you open a new window, every time you open a new game or you enter a league or even you pop open a chat with your opponent, it creates new windows for you. And so that makes it so that game capture and window capture can't actually capture Magic Online. So that's the first really important distinction here is make sure that you do a monitor capture like we just did. And it's always going to be recording what's going on on your screen, but this way it'll be able to capture whatever's going on in Magic Online at that time. Um, another problem that I get asked about often is people are running MTGO, but it's not displaying. So in order to fix that, you can go to uh, your scene for your source MTGO, you go to properties. And uh, here there's an option, mine's unchecked, but some people will have this um, an availability to click this. And it says capture layered windows. Um, as long as you have this enabled, see, like I said, mine, mine doesn't, doesn't have this problem, but some people do. As long as you enable this um, and hit OK, it's going to make sure that Magic Online actually shows up on there for you. Um, so now that we have Magic Online there, we can, you know, set it up and make it the correct size, whatever we want it to look at. But if you've ever seen uh, streams on Twitch, you know that an important thing is that over here on this area, we'll usually have a webcam. And down here on this area, we'll usually have the Twitch chat. So the next thing we want to add is uh, our webcam. So let's go to add video capture device. And here we can call it whatever we want. In this case, we can say webcam. Now we're going to get a couple of options. Um, device selection here, you can uh, drop down and you're going to get a couple choices. If you have a computer with a built-in webcam, it's going to default to your built-in webcam. That's what you want. If you have a separate webcam, which is what I do, you're going to get a list of options. Uh, mine's the Logitech HD Pro webcam. And then just important thing to note, if you have a webcam and the webcam has a microphone, you will want to enable this audio input device. This is basically telling OBS where your sound is coming from. So you're going to want to enable this to be the webcam. So in that case, I would have it match, right? I would have microphone from the HD Pro webcam because that is my current webcam. However, I use a separate microphone for my stream. So in this case, I'm going to choose to disable the audio input device. This will really depend on what your setup looks like. It's very customizable. Um, the only thing you want to make sure is that you only have one input device when it comes to audio. So like I said, we have the Logitech HD Pro webcam here. All these uh, default settings are going to be fine. And in particular, I am disabling the audio input because I'll use the audio input from a different microphone. And I'll say, OK. Hello. We're back again. Uh, so now we want to move this, uh, this webcam so that it fits within the Magic Online parameters. The way you edit any scene on OBS is by, going to, by selecting it. So we are currently highlighted on the webcam. And then go to Edit Scene. And as soon as we did that, do you see that red border that shows up here at the bottom? and this little square right here. This means that I can move it around to whatever I want it to look like. So now we have a webcam. It's fully customizable. We can move it wherever we want. In this case, I want to put it over here. Um, but in the case of my webcam, and this will be true with your webcam as well, you see all this empty space around here, like all this and all this here. It's wasted space. So a little pro tip of how you can fix this. Um, the, the Alt Option key on your computer. If you hit that and then you move this around, it'll actually crop the webcam. So as opposed to making it bigger and smaller by grabbing it in the corner, if you hit the Alt Option key, you can actually just make it smaller and crop it. If by any chance you happen to mess up, that's completely fine. Um, over here under Properties, you can reset um, reset the cropping. So hold on, here it is. Uh, webcam, right click webcam, uh, position and size. And there's the option here, reset cropping. So if I do that, it'll pop it open again. So if you, if you cut it a little too much, no big deal. But in this case, I will cut it a little bit more, cut it a little bit more. There you go. So now we have a webcam. We will play around with the size a little bit later to figure out how we want it to fit in the, in the grand scheme of things. But for now, this is pretty good. 
The last thing you want to add on here is your Twitch chat. So uh, in order to do that, you're going to have to go onto your Twitch account, not Twitter, Twitch. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm assuming at this point you have signed up to Twitch, but if you have not, then go ahead and do that. And so now that we're here, um, this is my current Twitch profile. If I click on my actual name and I go to channel, which is just my username, Twitch TV slash my username, and you can see this is my last broadcast. I swore an oath to draft. <laughs> um, down here, you're going to see a little cogwheel, and this is where the chat goes. So just as a test, there you go. That's what chat looks like when people are interacting with you and you, your stream will show up right here. So if I go the little cogwheel and I say pop out, it's going to pop out a different version of the Twitch chat. I can go ahead and minimize this now. Uh, okay, so this is uh, our Twitch chat. We want that to be displayed right here. Um, the way we do that is we go to back here to OBS. We go to write, add, and this time we do a window capture. This time we're going to call it chat. And here we get a couple options. The options are going to be whatever you currently have open. So I currently have Magic the Gathering online. I have Explorer open and I have the Gabby Twitch Google Chrome tab open. So I'm going to choose that and say, OK. All right. So this is going to capture what this is capturing is whatever is on this screen right here. So I can take this wherever I want at this point. I can minimize it if I, if I even want to. This will just always continue to feed from that specific source. So in this case, um, maybe we can make it a little bit bigger and maybe we can make Magic Online a little bit smaller just to like get it to fit in there properly. Um, and my webcam, we can play around with that as well just so that things fit a little bit nicer. There you go. So something to keep in mind when you're taking a look at OBS, everything you see on here is what your Twitch viewer will see. Um, that's why it's such a benefit to having another monitor is because you can put on the other monitor all the stuff that you don't want your Twitch chat, to, your, you know, your Twitch stream to see at the same time. Um, this setup, the way it works, is from the top down. So imagine you're looking at this and we are looking from here on down. So that means that the chat is above the webcam and the webcam is above MTGO. The reason this is relevant is because you can add a lot of things to your Twitch stream to make it look nicer, right? This is a basic setup. We could go live with this and it would look fine, but it wouldn't look great. So one of the easiest way, in fact, the easiest way to really level up your channel and make it look a lot nicer is by adding a thing called an overlay. An overlay is a very simple graphic that sits on top all of this, all of the stream and organizes things into nice quadrants so that when the Twitch viewer sees it at home, it looks, you know, nice and organized. I'll show you how to do that very quickly. I have a mock-up of an, of an old overlay I used to use. Um, so the way that would work is you go right click, add image. And an overlay is just a simple image that has transparency on it and it has space for um, to geo for your webcam and your chat to go into. So we're gonna call it overlay. And then it's going to ask me for where is this image coming from, right? So I made this image very quickly in Photoshop. Um, you can find a lot of free ones online. Um, you can make a very quick one using Photoshop for, you know, if you're on Windows, you can use something like Pixelmator and you're on Mac. There's a wealth of options when it comes to uh, photo editing and, and, video, and picture editing uh, software. So I'm going to go to Browse. Let's go to desktop, and I have an overlay here that I mocked up. It's called Jose's Edits. There you go. Uh, it's going to choose, it's going to ask me for different options. All these default options are fine. All right. And so if you sized it correctly, and the correct size is 1920 by 1080, uh, it's going to show up and be immediately right here. If it's any smaller, you can still play around with it and make it fit, you know. Um, so I'm going to make this so that it fits on our entire overlay. And this is the reason why I was mentioning that things look from the top down. This currently means that the overlay is above the chat, is above the webcam, and it's above MTGO. And so knowing that, we can organize things underneath it so that everything fits very nicely and is 
panorama because as you see there's a lot of empty space down here empty geo is kind of like creeping over to my webcam the chat doesn't really fit um, so we can go ahead and fix all that uh, the first thing we can fix is empty geo and we can size it so it fits properly on there let's make it a little smaller and we just want to make sure that we capture all that's going to be the gameplay in there so make this a little bit wider perfect all right so now we are capturing all of mtgo and it looks very nice now let's play around with a webcam a little bit uh, to to edit the scene you first have to click on it and here we have the option to edit it um, that's when those red corners become highlighted because the overlay is above the webcam we just have to, it doesn't matter how big the webcam is as long as it fits within this quadrant that we added. So even with your keyboard, you can move it around. So I'm going to move it a little bit to the right, a little bit down. All right. And then when it comes to the webcam, the webcam is also, or sorry, the chat. The chat is also below empty geo. So I can move it around, make it fit wherever I want. See, I don't actually need the thing that says send message because I'm not going to be sending any messages myself. So I can move it around there and... There's a chat. Perfect. So now it looks a lot nicer and we have a pretty functional and, and nice looking stream. The last thing that I wanted to show you when it comes to specific layout is that you can add text on here and the text is a very um, quick way of showing the viewer where you are in terms of what format you're playing, what match you're playing, whether you're up or down games, etc. So over here, we would go to right click add and we would add a text. You can call it whatever you want, like with everything that we've done before, you can name it whatever you want. You just want to pick a name that will help you remember um, what the actual source is. So in this case, I'm going to call it record. And I'm going to use this text to let the viewer at home know where I am in the specific draft. You can choose your font. You can customize this however you want. So I'll, I'll say Arial is fine. Font 48 is fine. Um, here I can enter the text, so I'm going to say current event, and we're going to be doing an Oath of the Gatewatch draft, and I am going to go ahead and add that. So this looks a little bit big, but like everything else, we can move it around and customize it. So uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. Currently it's a 48, we can make it smaller, we can bring it down to about 30. We can make it bold because it'll look a little bit nicer. So the current event is an Oath of the Gatewatch draft. And if you want to add something like the record, we can add a space and say um, record. Uh, maybe we are 1 and 0. We just started the draft. Cool. So this will let your viewers, as soon as they come into your Twitch stream, be able to know, hey, I know what's up. I can see that there is another Gatewatch draft going on. I can see that our record is currently 2-1. Um, and it'll you know, it'll help anybody who just joins the stream that maybe didn't see what we drafted or didn't know that we're playing in a premiere event or a PPTQ, whatever it may be. It'll just bring them up to speed pretty quickly. So that's why I have this rectangle right here for extra text. If you do an overlay, I recommend that you leave some space somewhere in the overlay to be able to add that kind of information. So other things that you can consider putting on there, maybe you have goals. So you have a follower goal, you want to hit 100 followers and you'll do a special celebration stream. And that's something that you want to add on there. Or maybe you just want to add your current event and your record. Maybe you can add how many drafts you've won that day. Um, maybe you can add the name of the deck that you drafted or what deck we're currently playing. So if we're playing standard, I could change it to, you know, standard eight man and say that we're testing with abs and aggro and that our record is two and up. So that's a very, that's a very simple setup um, for Magic Online, but this is really all the setup that you need and all the elements that you need in order for it to look good. Um, I will be doing a second series in this video that is specifically for the settings that you need to have in order to stream Magic Online. And this video is really important. Even if you've already set up your Magic stream, uh, I recommend you check out that video because it'll help you optimize your computer to stream at its best capacity for Twitch. Um, so I will see you guys in a little bit um, in the second part of uh, how to set up your Twitch stream.